Hey, my beautiful Arizonans, welcome back to Drontastic Voyage. This time I'm heading into the Coronado Cave. Uh, it's about, we're right on the Mexico border with Arizona and Mexico, and I'm at the Coronado National Memorial. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. The cave itself is pretty big. I'll give you some more information when I head up there. And I'm going to go on inside, and I heard there's a scout group out here right now, so I don't want to interrupt them and anything they're doing with their scout group, but... Yeah, this is pretty cool. So it's a very beautiful area. Stop by the ranger station here, pick yourself up a pamphlet that tells you all about the Coronado Cave and how, uh, was this, Francis Cortez de Coronado it was a Spanish conquistador that came out here looking for the seven cities of uh, gold or Sibula. So, and I just want to give you guys a heads up that the, uh, if you're going to fly a drone out here, you cannot. This is the National Park Service, it's the Department of the Interior. However, I did talk to the ranger, very nice woman that was inside the ranger station here, as well as law enforcement outside of the park. And they said, yeah, no problem. I can go ahead and launch from outside of the park. Uh, just don't fly inside the park, whatnot. I literally launched and landed right next to the law enforcement officer outside of the park. He was very cool. So just make sure you're abiding by all drone laws and regulations and you're good. So, all right, guys. God bless. Yeah, so according to the uh, the pamphlet brochure, a lot of wildlife out here. So, you know, you'll commonly see javelina, you know, peccary, all kinds of different birds, uh, quotamunde, possible snakes. So you got to be careful. Um, you know, more elusive animals are like bobcats, mountain lions, and bears. So, chances are you don't see them, but they see you. So, make sure you have some protection. Again, I brought my bear spray. Got a knife, got my headlamp, and I also have a very bright flashlight. So don't come to the cave thinking that one little flashlight is gonna be enough. I'd say you want at least two uh, light sources.
right, hey everybody. So here I am at the uh, entrance to Coronado Cave. So the cool thing about this cave is that uh, there's evidence that it's been used for about the last 8,000 years. So there's even uh, some articles out there that perhaps some uh, Apache Indians were hiding from the U.S. Army out here in this cave. It's where I'd be. It's where I'd be hiding um, if I was being uh, trilled or, or anything like that. So. All right, I hope you guys are ready. Here I go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go inside. So, all righty. <sighs> Gotta say, bring your hiking shoes with you. <sighs> and at least two light sources. Make sure your shoes have some good grip on them too. There's a couple other people in here with me, which is awesome. I'm bringing their kids. There was a, a Cub Scout troop of about 10 kids before I came in here, so I was letting them do their little exploring, and they were they were really cute, and the, seemed like they really enjoyed coming in here. Oh yeah, this cave is huge, huge cave. I really hope the camera, you know, picks all this up and I have enough light for the camera to see everything. God, this is awesome. These rock formations are amazing. So I'm a new geologist, but uh, I'm guessing these are limestone. So over thousands and thousands of years, there was water that was dripping through here. I guess there was a natural spring and it formed this whole cave system. So this cave system is uh, no longer alive, no longer living. And a lot of people would steal pieces of the stalactites and stalagmites, which totally isn't cool. So there's the cave entrance over there. So if you come here, vandalism is extremely prohibited. So don't come in here thinking you're gonna be able to steal pieces of rocks or find gold. There's no gold in here. There we go. And also, you know, with social media nowadays, you don't need to be doing this. Putting initials on the walls. This is from 2021 as well, so K plus N. Hey, don't be doing that. Some more graffiti. But even though this graffiti is here, it's still protected, so. And there's graffiti here that uh, the sign outside told, told me that uh, it's from the 1890s, so that's actually pretty cool. You know, with everybody talking about, hey, don't paint rocks, don't do this, don't do that. Hey, you know what? I agree with you, but you also got to see that people only 100 years ago or so were out there painting rocks. All right. Look at this. Man. Yeah, I don't want to go into there, but I heard it goes through here behind this cave wall and it comes back out out here so and i hear if you stay all the way to the left there's a natural skylight that you can experience so that's where we're going to be heading this is literally the coolest cave 
that you can go into for free. So I really want to go down here. That's where I want to go, but... Oh, so, okay, so this is an entrance that one of the young men outside were telling me that if you just go down there, it just comes up back out the other end. It's not like it goes all through some mysterious tunnel and, you know, and you can find the city of gold. Nothing like that, but... So I'm just going to keep on going this way. Watch your head walking through here, too. You don't want to hit it, scrape it up, or worse, get some stitches. So like I said, I have two light sources. I have my flashlight right here, and I also have a headlamp. Sorry, I don't want to blind y'all, but... <laughs> Got my headlamp on as well. It feels good in here, too. It's about 60, 65, 67 degrees, so... It's actually very, very comfortable. It's not freezing, it's not hot. These rock formations are amazing. Going on, fellas, you guys heading back? Yeah, yeah there's a bunch of small rooms back there. Oh, check awesome. Them yep, and check them out. Hey, you guys be safe. All right, you too. Have a good one, thank you. All right. This cave just keeps on going. Like I was saying, it's about 600 feet long and 70 feet wide and 20 feet tall. Yeah, this is called a bridge right here. This is where a stalactite and a stalagmite merge. Right here, so that's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna stay to the left. I'm gonna go this way and see if I can find that skylight. Yeah. Jesus, I'm about to bust my butt. Here we go. Oh, there's the natural skylight right there. <laughs> so I guess there's a way out if you really wanted to try. Maybe you could squeeze out there. Be interesting to see where it goes. All right, y'all. Well, that's the Coronado Cave. I'm going to go and head on out. Oh, that's nice and smooth. Squeezing my way back down this area. And there's a natural skylight up here. Ow. It's a tight fit though. Tight fit though. All right, you guys have a good one. You too. Don't kill yourself. They got it for real. I broke my leg there a second ago. Let's see what this is over here. Ooh, yeah, I'm going in there. Let's check this out. <laughs> awesome. I'm really surprised I haven't seen a bat yet. So here's the modern graffiti that the sign tells you about outside, even though it's uh, not very appealing to us nowadays. This dates back to about 15 years ago. <laughs> Still very, very wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. But it's protected, and you you see no graffiti really anywhere else. So they they t they keep a good eye on this cave and make sure people aren't in here vandalizing. This is all you really see, and then besides the initials that I saw up front, I really want to find the uh, the graffiti from over 120 years ago. That'd be neat to see. Let's see if I can make my way out of here. It's pretty easy. It's not hard to come in and then find your way back out. It's just a straight shot. Back and forth. Let me see if I can find that graffiti. Doubt it's that high. But... Yeah. 
So what I'm, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna turn off all my lights just so you can see how dark it is in here. Go this way. Hit my flashlight. If I can find the button, it's dark in here. Here's my flashlight. And now I'm gonna turn my headlamp off. Oh yeah. Extremely dark in here. So I got that, there's my headlight. My headlamp is back on. And use my flashlight again. Yeah, if y'all are back in uh, the Cochise County area, Sierra Vista specifically, or her, well, this is Hereford, uh, visit the Coronado National Memorial. And as soon as you see the ranger station on the right, about a quarter mile, if not less, down the road, on the right is the Coronado Cave Trail, and that's the trailhead that you start to come up this way. It's about half a mile hike. It's, I mean, it's a little challenging. It's really not that bad. You're gonna be a little out of breath, but not, it's not gonna kill you. Still trying to find that uh, graffiti from the 1890s, but eh. if we don't find it, no, no big deal. It's actually a good thing. This cave is pretty clean. <laughs> you gotta watch your steps seriously about busting my butt. About three times already. So I, I guarantee the area where I saw the colored graffiti and then to the right, I bet this is where it comes out at. It was a really tight fit and there was no way I'd be able to get through there, but I guess this is where the entrance is to it and it goes out to the other side, so. Like a little wormhole to another dimension. I'm going to make my way out of here. It feels so nice in this cave. It's like the air conditioning is on, on a hot day. I hear some more people coming in, so I'm gonna go ahead and exit. And I'll let them do their exploring. All right, everybody, so that was the Coronado Cave here at the Coronado National Memorial. Hope you guys enjoyed the video I did making it. It's amazing. If you ever get the chance to come out here, highly, highly recommend. So again, Cochise County, Hereford, Arizona. About 25 miles from Fort Huachuca, and not even that much, 20 miles, 15, 20 miles. Um, go to the uh, ranger station. About a quarter, mile, a quarter mile down the road from that on the right is the entrance to the trailhead. A half mile hike up here in a 600 foot long cave. So thanks for sticking with us, sticking with me and being patient. Trying to make this video, I'm just busting my butt in there a couple of times. So, I highly recommend following, uh, actually, so I want to give a shout out to Mr. Leonard Taylor, who's the author of Agave Guides, and also Karen from No Spring Chicken Hikes. She's an, uh, also a hiker from around this area, and her and I uh, kind of do the same thing. Um, I have the drone. She, she does want to get a drone, but the links to their channels and Mr. Taylor's website is below. So, and also I'll put some more information about this cave in the information section below, uh, below this video. So I hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed this uh, trip this time. And uh, I'm still gonna try to get out there now that the weather is getting a lot warmer. It feels beautiful, I'm gonna be careful, but it's more encouraging than coming out here in the winter time. And, creating videos for y'all, so <laughs> until then, make sure you like and subscribe, and uh, God bless.